you may find that Google has a problem reconciling that. And Google's instruction to the software when something like this happens is to look at all of those files and just re-upload everything that's on your computer that's not yet in Google Drive. I'm trying to clean up a large amount of conflict folders which appeared in our Google Shared Drive when I was trying to reorganize files and folders. I've been able to determine that the folder where the issue may have originated, but I don't understand what is causing this. Any advice? That's an interesting question. I'm gonna guess that if you have conflicted folders in your Google Drive, it's probably something related to synchronizing down to your local computer. And I'm gonna guess that the conflict was created somehow on the computer that you're using right now. Let's dive into it and try and explain why I take that position and what's gonna bring me to assume that. Now, I've been working with file systems, computers, small business technology, and the business owners for over 20 years now. I started as a consultant literally when I was 15 years old, and I grew up a business that eventually I left school and turned into a company, and 15 years of running that company later, here we are. Now, the interesting thing when it comes to computers and systems is usually when something happens that's unexpected, it's something to do with human error. Now, we've got a bit of a joke in the IT industry that sometimes it's a PEBCAC error. And what that means is problem exists between computer and chair. And that means, well, what did the user do that caused the IT or the business application to perform in a way or work in a way that was unexpected? And what we try and do when we build software, when we build business processes, when we build services is for us to be as user-centric as possible, meaning that we try and make sure that no one accidentally gets something wrong. Now, we approach this from a service perspective in our business with our concierge service where we give a free domain name and free hosting of DNS to all of our customers because we know that from time to time, customers are gonna get in and dick around with the domain name settings and they're probably gonna break their email. And if we're managing it, the customer still has the option to go and you know log into our portal and manage anything to do with their own domain name themselves if they want. But they're probably just gonna ask us to do it for them and that's included for free as part of their concierge service. So at the end of the day, we've eliminated one thing the user might do to potentially stop them having a good experience, which is receiving your emails on time and having your business be able to receive orders and communicate with customers and work. Now, the reason I mentioned this in context of this video is I am in all my years of working with Google and working with the Google Workspace ecosystem. I've not had many times where Google has randomly done something to break a process or duplicate or delete files or destroy data. From time to time, we've had customers come to us and say, Google ate my spreadsheet or Google lost my file or Google created a mess in my Google Drive or Google changed the sharing settings on this file and now I can't access it anymore. But in most cases, we can trace back through logs, through reports, through administrative investigation that somehow another piece of software or a person's actions that were maybe accidental has caused the actual issue to happen. And so what we do is when an issue comes up like this, where someone says, hey, Google ate my files or Google doubled up my files, we usually try, and it's not about pointing the finger, but we usually try and investigate Okay, what might the user have done or what might another action have done that's caused the issue? It's very, very, very unlikely that a piece of software like Google Workspace, which is deployed to literally billions of people to access, it's very unlikely that that piece of software is going to just break or something go wrong. Now, there are bugs. There are bugs. And there are certainly times where something has gone wrong in the Google ecosystem. But it's very unlikely because Google has a quite robust process of testing with small groups of people and then rolling out changes to progressively larger and larger groups of people doing their balances and their checks to make sure things are working correctly before hitting the green light and deploying a new change or a new update or a new piece of code globally to the billions of users that use it. Google, in fact, have one of the best reputations in the world for reliable services and reliable tools. Okay, now, now I've shared all of that, that gives you the history and the context. Let's look at the actual practical of what's going on here. So a large amount of conflict folders have appeared and we've got to work out what's going on here. Now, if you're trying to do organization of files and folders, quite often what happens is you're dragging and dropping and you're changing things and some common accidents can happen from time to time. Sometimes you may drag and drop a folder and accidentally drop it into a subfile or subfolder 
of one of the ones that you're working with. And when someone comes to us and says, hey, my files just disappeared, what that sometimes actually means is I dragged and dropped it into a folder and I can't see it anymore. The second thing is that Google Drive's synchronization tool on your desktop computer is not completely infallible. Unfortunately, just based on the way that computer architecture and particularly cloud synchronization works, when we make a change on our local computer, maybe we're moving around some files or some folders in the local version of our Google Drive, that is the files and folders that have been synchronized to our local computer, it does actually take time for them to be uploaded and synchronized to the internet. Now, Google's smart. If you move a file from one folder to another folder, it's not gonna re-upload the whole folder. It just sends an instruction to the web that I need to move this folder or I need to rename this folder or move this file, rename this file. But Google does have what's called a queue for those changes. Now, so that Google servers don't get overloaded, so that your internet connection doesn't get completely overloaded, or your computer may run out of memory, Google doesn't make all of these changes in real time. It logs all the changes to a queue, and then the queue is processed. Now, it may open multiple sessions at the same time, and so it may be doing 10 queue items at the same time, or 12 queue items at the same time. But if you've just moved 100 files, well, Google's only going to actually tell the server online, your online version of Google Drive, to move or rename or change each of those files, 10 to 12 files at a time. And if, for example, you are adding some new files or you are adding some new folders to your Google Drive on your computer and you're waiting for them to be synchronized online, well, that queue might be full of files that you're trying to upload and as you're renaming files, well, potentially you don't have those renaming instructions go up to your online folders in time until you've finished uploading the files that you've been working on. Now, there's some other ways of kind of like getting around this. You can pause and restart your Google Drive synchronization and sometimes that will force Google to clear the queue and sometimes it will you know, do all the renames and then it will get back to uploading the big files. If you restart your computer part the way through this process, well, from time to time, there can be issues with that queue of changes that are happening on your local computer and trying to be synchronized online to the web. And so those interruptions may mean that files that you changed on your local computer don't actually get reflected properly on the online version of your My Drive or your shared drives. From time to time, Google Drive might crash on your computer and some of those changes may even be lost. And what that means is what you think you rearranged on your local computer just may never actually be properly reconciled on the online Google Drive. And what can happen then is you reboot your computer and once you reboot your computer, Google Drive checks everything and it checks all the files that are online and it checks all the files that are on your local drive. Keep in mind, if you've got tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of files, which you probably do, you know, that checking can take a lot of time and computers aren't perfect. Sometimes they get a few things wrong. But what may have happened here is if you get files that are changed on your local computer and they're different to what's reflected on the online Google Drive, well, you may find that Google has a problem reconciling that. And Google's instruction to the software when something like this happens is to look at all of those files and just re-upload everything that's on your computer that's not yet in Google Drive. And that may be a little bit annoying because you may end up with multiple copies of files or multiple copies of folders. But Google wants to err on the side of capturing everything and keeping everything rather than deleting files, even if it thinks it's a good idea to delete them, or even if it knows that you've got a double up of folders. Google's Google Drive app doesn't have the logic built in to say, hey, it looks like you've accidentally duplicated a folder, or it looks like I crashed last time and the folder's been duplicated and now there's two copies of things. It's not actually that smart. Google Drive, when you launch it on your computer, will look at what's on the web, look at what's on your computer, and if there's anything on your computer that's not on the web in your Google Drive folder, it's gonna upload that. Sometimes that means you'll get double copies of files, but you still at least get to keep everything. Now, what might have caused that double up to happen if it wasn't an issue with your Google Drive crashing or you uploading or changing too many files at the same time and your computer didn't quite capture all of those changes and log them and upload them properly? Well, it could be third-party software. I mentioned that earlier that that could be a potential cause. Third-party software might be a backup software or a file synchronization software. Maybe you wanna synchronize files to a network device locally in your home as an extra level of backup. 
Not something that I recommend, but plenty of people tend to do that when they're doing DIY backups. Maybe you have an antivirus software, which is scanning files or scanning folders. Sometimes they will lock files. Sometimes they will disrupt the architecture of a file as they're doing a scan on it and triggers a resynchronization. Now, most software is gonna be compatible with Google Drive, and so it's unlikely that you have any issues with that. But if this is something that's happening consistently, well, you might wanna look into that. Now, once you've got a set of duplicated files and it's a bit of a mess, if it's not too many files, hopefully you can get them fixed and reorganized manually. It does take some time, but that would be always my preference in getting things tidied up so you don't accidentally lose anything because the alternative is to use a software tool to reorganize your files or delete the duplicates or find the files and folders that have duplicates and give you options on how you manage and how you handle those. Personally, even though those tools are useful, if you can avoid using them, it would be best to unsort and refix things manually because you wanna make sure that you're not losing any data in this process. And some of the automated tools, when trying to be helpful, will not always capture every single one of your files and you end up kind of having to manually drag and drop and fix the sorting anyway, that would be my recommendation as much as possible. Now, finally, if you're doing any kind of file organization on your local computer, it's my strong recommendation, you do it where you've got a good internet connection. If you've got a spot in the house where the Wi-Fi is a bit spotty or not that great, try and plug into a cable and you'll probably get a faster internet connection. That means with a direct cable connection to your router, Google Drive can synchronize faster and any changes you make can be reflected online faster as well. It also means there's less chance of any dropouts, which may impact it. And of course, as you're doing this, make sure that your Google Drive is on and active and it'll probably have a little spinning icon to let you know that it's actually synchronizing the files as you're working on them. If you need more help with what we've covered in this video, IT Genius provides support services to businesses all over the world with problems just like this. Click the link below to get started.